Hi everyone, welcome to my English. My name is Hira and today we are going to look at the writing task 1 of IELTS academic test and this writing task is to describe the given statistical or pictorial representation and that would mean the pie chart, bar graph, line diagram and so on in 150 words or more. And in this lesson we are going to learn the duration and the word limit, the band descriptors of writing task 1 academic, the question types, writing task 1, overall structure. This is going to be overall a broad kind of a video and I will take up the individual representations like pie chart, bar graph separately in individual lessons. So let us first take a look at the duration. The time allotted for writing task 1 is 20 minutes. The minimum word limit is 150 words. So that's the minimum word limit. You should not be writing in just 150 words. You should write a bit more than that. Let's take a look at the band descriptors now. Now when I talk about the band descriptors, you are actually tested on four things which we already discussed in the overview lesson which is the objective description of graphic information. That means nowhere in the description it should show that you are being biased. So it is an impartial view of what you look at. A report on an impersonal topic without giving opinion and suggestion. So please do not give your opinion and suggestion. Keep them for writing task 2. Your ability to compare and contrast. These are your two skills which will be primarily judged. Use the language of graphical description. Depending on what description you're talking about, you should choose your vocabulary accordingly and we take a look at that as well. The band descriptors are number one, task achievement. Task achievement means you should present a clear overview of what statistical information you're looking at. Are you able to cover the key features adequately or not? And remember, you're not writing too much detail and uh, you're not writing something that is inaccurate or there is no data to support that. So please analyze the, the representation, the chart or whatever carefully. Identify all the key features. Highlight your key features in the overview, right? Then are you writing the body paragraphs with data or not? And don't put any information that is not correct. Don't write any opinion. Write a fact-based report and write in over 150 words. Now talking about coherence and cohesion, it is important that there is a proper organization of the information. You have to plan where to put what information. There are four paragraphs including the structure and the body paragraphs. Use a range of linking devices but do not you know make mistakes with linking words. Use referencing like, uh, you know, pronouns like this, it, that, and so on. That way you're referring to something that you've already said before. Then we have lexical resource. So here your use of vocabulary, your spellings, your number of mistakes will definitely affect your score. Try not to use your words repeatedly. Use a range of vocabulary. For different graphical representations, use different vocabulary. So your appropriate vocabulary should be used. You should understand collocations properly, matching verbs with their nouns, right? Don't use the wrong words. No informal language is to be used because this is a formal piece of writing. So you should be very careful with it. Now talking about grammatical range and accuracy, this is divided into two parts. One, your grammar has to be accurate. So avoid mistakes in your tenses, subject verb agreement, the correct tense sentence structure, the correct word order, the correct punctuation, Plus, your sentences should have a range of grammatical structures. Use both simple, complex structures at ease. Right? If you're able to do that, you're going to get a good score in grammatical range and accuracy. Now, there are different types of questions that you can get in and a report on an impersonal topic without giving opinion and suggestion. So please do not give your opinion and suggestion. Keep them for writing task 2. Writing task 1 of academic, it is a bar diagram, line diagram, pie chart, map, table, flow chart or process diagram. So today 
the structure, the overall structure of any type of a writing task one. So the first thing that you do is you paraphrase the question. So paraphrasing is you are restating the question in different set of words. But remember the meaning of the question, meaning of the sentence statement does not change. Para two, you will have to write an overview wherein you first of all observe the general trend which you are observing from the given diagram. And then you'll have to also write a striking feature, which you think is standing out. And remember not to include any statistical data in para 2, like no figures in para 2. In para 3 and para 4, you're going to write the details. So detail para 1, detail para 2. Try to write the comparisons, the similarities in para 3 and the differences or the contrast in para 4. So you are also getting marks for compare and contrast. So that's how you should write. There are some additional tips that I would like to tell you, which are avoid using contractions. So here, since it has already been mentioned that it is a formal piece of writing, you should not write any contractions. You should not write any informal vocabulary. Like it has become more popular and not, it has got more popular. So become and got. You should use formal words. Avoid using exclamatory marks. So exclamatory marks since it is informal, so that's not allowed. Do not give information that is not provided. It may be considered irrelevant, affecting your task achievement. Avoid repeating the words or phrases from the exam question. Write it in your own words. Use words and phrases given in the exam paper only if they cannot be replaced by suitable synonyms. Now let's take a look at the important vocabulary for writing task one, academic writing. So how you start off with your answer is you begin with the, the pie chart, the histogram, the bar diagram, the line diagram and so on, the map or the given map, the presented map, the shown map, the provided map. This is the way you start. Then you include what are you actually talking about. So the given bar chart shows or represents, depicts, illustrates, expresses, demonstrates, summarizes so there can be a z instead of it and both the spellings will be counted correctly describes enumerates indicates gives information presents information delineates compares indicates so these are the verbs that you can use to start off okay now what does it show does it show the changes does it show the information about or data about or how the the ratio of the proportion of the percentages of, the trend of, the comparison of, the differences between, the number of, the data on, comparative data or the amount of, amount of what, amount of increase, decrease, fluctuation, stability, steady increase and so on. So for increase and rapid increase, I've listed down some nouns and verbs. So a growth in so and so or a growth. An increase, a progress, a rise, an improvement, an upward trend, a surge, an increase. But if it is a rapid increase, a rapid, a sharp, dramatic, steep or drastic rise, a boom, a hike, a spike, acclivity. And when it comes to the verbs, you can say it rise or rose, go up, went up, uplift, climb, soar, rocketed, increased, surged, boomed. Now, these are some adjectives that you can use. So what kind of growth it is? It is a rapid growth, sudden, dramatic, considerable, steady, noticeable, moderate, mentionable, tremendous, huge, enormous, massive, vast, gigantic, monumental, significant, substantial, sharp, swift, great. You can also play around with words by making the adjectives into adverbs by adding an ly to these so it increased rapidly suddenly dramatically considerably steadily noticeably moderately mentionably and so on so this is going to be of great help to you now when it comes to decrease what kind of verbs and nouns you can use are listed over here so nouns are a decrease a decline a fall a reduction a downward trend 
a drop, a slump, a dramatic fall, a sharp fall, declivity. And similarly, we have verbs which are decreased, declined, fell, reduced, dipped, dropped, went down, plunged, slumped. Plummeted. If there is no change or if the change stabilized, what words are you going to use is? So these are the nouns. So a level out, no change, a plateau. Verbs are remain stable, remain constant, steady, static, unchanged, leveled out, did not change, maintained the same level, plateaued at. And if there is a steady change, steady, so moderate, gradual, progressive, sequential, steady, ceaseless. Now, if you add an ly to it, it will become an adverb. So, it change or it remain or it rose moderately. It increased gradually, progressively, sequentially, steadily, ceaselessly and so on. Then, for fluctuations, you can use these words as nouns a fluctuation and oscillation and verbs which are fluctuated at or fluctuated around or hovered around or oscillated and for adverbs you can say intermittently sporadically erratically irregularly okay now if you're talking about the highest and the lowest point you can use these words highest point the peak apex highest point summit zenith pinnacle top these are nouns. Verb is peaked, reached, touched, the peak, apex or highest point or summit or zenith or pinnacle or top, climaxed, culminated. The lowest point is the lowest point, mark, level. Instead of point, you can say lowest mark, lowest level or bottom most point, rock bottom, bottom most mark, nadir, an all-time low, reached the lowest point or touched the lowest point or reached the nadir, get the lowest point or hit an all-time low. Then for uh, comparison vocabulary, if it is a greater extent comparison, we write overwhelmingly, substantially, significantly, considerably. If the extent is not so big, not so small, it is a moderate extent. So moderately, markedly. Less extent is hardly, barely, slightly, fractionally, marginally. If you're comparing with time, intertemporal, then you say subsequently, respectively, consecutively, sequentially, relative to or in relation to. Comparison of items. So you use words like previous, next, first, second, third, finally, former, latter. When you're using the transition words, these words you can use. They are also cohesive devices. Then afterwards, next, followed by, following that, simultaneously, after that, prior to, during, while, and finally. Phrases for approximation. About, almost, approximately, around, just about, just below, just above, just over. A little more than, a little less than. More or less, nearly, practically, roughly the same, well above, well below. Time vocabulary between the year so and so and so and so, right? So between so and so, from so to so, in the year or month, on day or day of the week or the date, at on and so. You should use the prepositions at on in and by properly by the year so-and-so or by so-and-so date or during the year so-and-so, over the period, over the century, later half of the year, over the next year, over the past few years, over the previous days, right? Weeks, months, years and decades. Use this vocabulary to sound better as far as your lexical resource is concerned. Then for proportional language used mainly in case of a pie chart, you can use 20% off or 10% off. So you can use it numerically or alphabetically. Both are correct. 50% or 50% off. 1 out of 5. 1 out of 10. 1 out of 2. 1 fifth of. 1 tenth of. 1 half of. Also 75%. You can say 75% or you can also say 3 fourth. Or if it is 78%, you can say a little above 3 fourth. 50% is half. 33% is one-third and if it is 31% below one-third or if it is 32 or 34, you can say more or less one-third, right? Or approximately or about 25% is quarter and 67% is two-third. 
I hope you have learned from this lesson. Thank you so much for watching the video till the end. I am going to cover writing task 1 individual question types in my next lesson. So stay tuned. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.